Hello there, I'm Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and this is the accompanying video that goes with the A Dram for Dad uh, Father's Day 2022 sample selection box set. Um, so if you're watching this, hopefully you've been gifted one of these if you are some kind of father figure in somebody's life. Um, and inside this box is uh, a set of samples that I put together um, of some, what I think are really, really good spirits. Now, Father's Day tends to get associated with whiskey. Dads drink whiskey, that's all it is. And I've done some sample packs previously in the past of Father's Day where I put a range of different spirits in like gins and all of that lot and they haven't really been that popular. We do seem to still have this stereotype of dads need to have whiskey. But I still wanted to keep something slightly different. So what I've done with this is we don't just have whiskey in this box, but we do have some other spirits that are kind of along the same line you know this sort of similar in terms of flavor profile so if you are a whiskey drinker you've been given this box there are a couple of drams in here that aren't whiskey but i'm hoping you're still really going to like because they're kind of along the same line so What's gonna happen is, uh, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what's in the box, um, although you can probably figure that out for yourself because if you've got a box, you can see it in there. There is a little bit of information um, on the label on the inside, but I will then just break this down into a couple of separate little vignettes a bit of a fancy word, isn't it? Um, where I'll give you a bit more in-depth background information about the brand or the distillery, a little bit of history about them, just kind of expanding on what was already on that label, just to give you a little bit of context in terms of who it is that's making this and how they're making it and what's involved with it. I'm not gonna give you any tasting notes. Um, I'm, it's half nine in the morning. I need to sh open the shop in, in half an hour. It's probably not a good idea if I drink three little drams before I open the shop. Um, although, you know, that might get me through the day. Um, plus, it would be my tasting notes and it will kind of, it might distort what you think. I want you to try these and see what you think of them and get your own tasting notes out of them. So by doing that, literally try it. If you want to add a little bit of water, that's absolutely fine. I've got one that's sort of at cast strength, which is the fifth one, uh, the English whiskey. The rest of them are all kind of 40, 43, 46%. So they've had water added to them to dilute them down to that level. But if you want to add water to it, that's fine. If you want to put a mixer with it, Coke, Iron Brew, soda water, whatever you want to do, not a problem. You do what you need to do to make the most out of these for yourself. The most important thing when you're trying anything, let alone this pack, but anything at all is, do I like it? Not me, you watching. If you just, that doesn't matter, you can have all the fanciest tasting notes in the world, you can be as elaborate as you want to be, and it's kind of meaningless apart from to you. Do you like this or not? And if you don't like this, that's absolutely fine. The box is there, the reason I do these sample boxes is for people to try things they might not necessarily have tried, and if they don't like it, well, you've only wasted 30 mil, you haven't wasted a full bottle. And if you do like it, these are all available in the shop. So if you do like one, two, hopefully six would be nice, and you wanna buy a bottle of each, that would be even better, then you can get them all through my shop. So if you are local, pop in the shop. If you wanted to try it again, I do still have sample stock available, but, uh, and, and you can buy bottles. Um, if you aren't local, UK uh, shipping is available, um, so I can post it down to you. There is a surcharge on that, just as there is with any shipping. I'm not Amazon, so I can't do it for free. Um, but hopefully something in here you'll really like, or it might, Kind of encourage you to try some new things and that's what i'm all about that's the reason i've got this shop so if you are if i was doing this kind of as a tasting event they're in the box in the order that i would have done them as a lineup so i would have started with the cascaged rum from the white peak distillery um, then we've got the filey bay ipa finish so uh, this is a single malt whiskey you'll find out about what the, what the ipa finish means um, from the spirit walks distillery in um, hunmanby just outside filey hence being called filey bay uh, i didn't say white peak is in derbyshire we've got uh, belmont farms butterscotch whiskey uh, virginia based distillery which is just absolutely brilliant. Um, Isabel Regina is a brandy, uh, so it's cognac and Spanish brandies that have been um, married in cast that previously held Pedro Jimenez Sherry. Uh, it's, yes, it's brandy and not everybody likes brandy, but this is absolutely fantastic. We then have a exclusive to the spirit specialist. Um, this is a single cast bottling from the English Whiskey Company down in Norfolk, but it's been bottled specifically for the Rolls Royce Enthusiasts Club. Um, however, there are still bottles left, so I am available to sell this to the general public. 
Um, and then we finish off with the Mossburn Island blended malt. Uh, finishing with that because that's the one that's got that slightly smoky feel to it. I tried not to put anything that was too heavily peated because that can put some people off, but there is a nice kind of like more gentle smokiness with this. So, um, these are available from the spirit specialist, uh, dot com and also in the shop. Uh, what I will probably do is put the pricing in the title screen before there is each background information. And then the timings of those will also be in the show notes. So you don't have to drink all of these in one go. Uh, what I'll also point out is these have lids, so you don't have to drink all of it in one go. If you want to take a sample, see what you think of it, give it a try, put the lid on, put it back in the box. Maybe if you are trying them all in one go, have a little nip from each one and then maybe go back and see what you think if, if it's kind of affected your thoughts on the earlier ones by progressing through it. Or if you literally just, I'm going to do that one tonight, I'm going to do that one to tomorrow, I'm going to do that one next week because I'm really, really busy. You can look on the show notes and just jump straight to the particular little part of the video that's got that background information. Right, so let's crack on with the first one. The White Peak Distillery is based in Ambergate, Derbyshire, 12 miles north of Derby city centre. It was founded by Max and Claire Vaughan in 2016, who were following a dream for years of producing a single malt whisky in Derbyshire, despite no previous experience in the drinks industry. The distillery is sited in a 24km stretch of the Derwent Valley that was awarded UNESCO World Heritage Status in 2001 within the old maintenance and store sheds of the Johnson & Nephew Wire Works that date back to 1876 and lasted for 120 years, which itself was rebuilt from a family-owned iron forge from the early 1800s. Initial spirit releases from White Peak included a range of gins and an Agricole rum aged in ex bourbon barrels, with their first single malt whisky release initially scheduled for launch in November in 2021. First launched in 2020, the team took 12 months to come up with their intended style and process for their own rum made from scratch. A large proportion of so-called British rums use spirit sourced from the Caribbean. It's a style of rum known as Agricole, which is more commonly found in French Caribbean countries, using pure sugarcane juice as opposed to the more traditional molasses, which produces a lighter and fresher flavour profile. White Peak sourced the cane juice from South America, mainly Bolivia, using panela, a form of dehydrated sugarcane juice. While this makes it much easier for transportation, it tends to be packed in wrapped up blocks, which tends to cause issues when coming through customs. A long fermentation period of around seven days increases the depth and complexity before the spirit is rested in a combination of ex bourbon casks and shaved, toasted and recharred red wine barrels for about a year before marrying together as a batch. That light, grassy style of flavour picks up a fair amount of influence from those casks, making this a rum which could quite easily be mistaken for whisky. White Peak Cask Aged Rum is available in 50 CL bottles only at an ABV of 45%. The Spirit of Yorkshire Distillery was founded in 2016 by Tom Meller and David Thompson. Tom was an arable farmer who set up the Wold Top Brewery in 2013 and already had ideas about opening a whiskey distillery in conjunction, and so partnered with long-standing friend and marketing expert David to set up the new spirit venture. The barley used for both beer and whiskey production is grown on Tom's own fields, with milling, mashing and fermentation taking place at the brewery four and a half miles away from the distillery itself. If the distillery was in Scotland, this would not be allowed due to Scotch Whiskey Association regulations. In planning the distillery, Tom and David enlisted the help of legendary distillery consultant Jim Swan, who was well known around the world for assisting new distilleries such as Cavalan, Kilhoman, Penderen and Lindor's Abbey before his untimely death in 2017. The house style will ultimately be akin to the likes of Glenlivet, fruit forward but somewhat delicate in body. The master distiller is a young man named Joe Clark. Joe's first job in the whiskey industry was as a part-timer in the York branch of the whiskey shop, at that time managed by none other than yours truly. His passion and enthusiasm was obvious from the very start, and he has worked tirelessly to ensure the early spirit releases from the distillery, under the brand name of Filey Bay, are of the highest quality. However, as is a legal requirement whenever I discuss Joe, I am obliged to show you this picture of Joe with our good friend Ollie Chilton of the Whiskey Exchange during a trip to Isla. Feel free to ask him about the long hair, it's quite the story. In addition to two copper pot stills, a directional arm can connect to a four plate column still, which enables them to play around with reflux and redistillation. 
Maturation takes place principally in first fill ex bourbon casks from Old Forester, although plenty of experimentation has been done with other cast types and finishing. Indeed, the current core range features a finish using Moscatel wine casks and an STR X Rioja cask finish. STR, or shaved, toasted, and recharred, is a signature of Jim Swan's legacy. Filey Bay flagship, however, can be seen as the key introduction to the Filey Bay flavour profile, with light, fruity, and creamy notes throughout. Unlike other recent new whisky distilleries across the UK, Spirit of Yorkshire never had any intention to delve into the massive gin or growing rum market, which would have given them an early and potentially lucrative revenue stream. The only concession they've made was the release of a whisky and malt spirit cream liqueur at the end of 2020, allowing visitors to their distillery who didn't drink whisky the chance to still appreciate their output. Filey Bay IPA finish has a somewhat convoluted process to get to bottle, but it does exemplify the close connection between the distillery and its sister brewery. Barrels that previously held Filey Bay flagship whiskey were filled with Wold Top Scarborough Fair IPA beer that rested in casks for nine months. To the team's surprise, the beer went into cask at an ABV of 5.1%, but came out at a higher strength of 9.6%, and you can find this beer bottled as Barrel Wave IPA. On the very same day the beer was disgorged from the casks, whiskey aged around four years old, that otherwise would have become flagship, was refilled into them and left for six months to marry the influence of the ale. Whilst there is not a denoted number of bottles, this release has been designated as batch number one, and it's bottled at an ABV of 46%. Based in Culpeper, Virginia, 70 miles southwest of Washington, D.C., Belmont Farm is owned by Chuck and Jeanette Miller, who set up the distillery in 1988 as one of the very first craft distilleries in the U.S. Indeed, Chuck had to work closely with the U.S. government to change regulations in order to support small-scale distillery operations, as previously licensing processes were heavily favoured towards big corporations who could afford excessive costs. Moonshining was a key part of the Miller family. Chuck has plenty of stories of being with his grandfather chased by the FBI, and he often questioned as a kid why they had three dairy tankers but only one cow. In fact, if you've ever watched the TV show Moonshiners, you'll have seen Chuck as he helps the boys with their more official legal bottlings. The 195 acre farmstead means Chuck and his family can grow all the corn, rye, wheat and barley they need for the wide range of bottlings they produce, meaning this is truly a field to bottle operation in every sense. During an online tasting event with Chuck in 2021, I asked him how the butterscotch whiskey was made, given it had a fantastic balance of sweet toffee notes without coming across as sickly or artificial. His straightforward answer blew me away. They simply take their standard Virginia whiskey with a mash bill of 51% corn, 24.5% wheat, 24.5% barley, put it in a vat and pour in a load of hard butterscotch candies, letting them dissolve in the liquid. It's also the same process used for their apple whiskey, in which dehydrated apple juice is added to a vat. Simple but highly effective. Belmont Farm Butterscotch Whiskey is bottled at 43% ABV. Launched in 2012, Isabel Regina is a blend of Gran Reserva Solera Spanish brandy from the Jimenez Spinola Bodega and a small amount of VSOP Cognac, which uses the Uni Blanc grape variety that are then married in moist Pedro Jimenez sherry casks for a further 12 months, so called because a small amount of the sherry is still remaining in those barrels. Cognac is a region on the west coast of France between La Rochelle and Bordeaux. Cognac is pot still distilled, whereas the oft confused Armagnac is column distilled, although both do use similar grape varieties. Armagnac is arguably more complex at a younger age, whereas Cognac improves more over time. VSOP is a designation for Cognac aged for a minimum of four years. XO used to require a minimum aging in cask of six years, however, from April 2018, this time was increased to 10 years. Gran Reserva, in terms of Spanish brandy, is an aging for an average of 10 years, and must be brandies that are distilled only in a pot still. Jimenez Spinola only use Pedro Jimenez grapes in their wine, sherry and spirits releases. This is somewhat unusual, as most Spanish brandy will be produced using Aran grapes, which is by far the most prevalent grape grown in Spain. Isabel Regina is bottled at 42% ABV.
The English whisky company is based at the St George's Distillery in Roundham, Norfolk, about 30 minutes southwest of Norwich. The first whisky distillery sited in England for 100 years, the Lee Valley Distillery in London was the last to operate in the country until its closure in 1905, it was founded in 2006 by father and son James and Andrew Nelstrop, who were part of generations of arable farmers but were looking to diversify their operations due to concerns with the future of the industry they'd spent years working in. Initially, Ian Henderson, previously the master distiller of Lafroy, was brought on board to oversee operations, before being joined in 2008 and eventually replaced by the current master distiller David Fitt, who had previously been a master brewer with Green King and mentored with Ian until he was able to take over the reins. Sadly, James Nelstrop passed away in September 2014, but Andrew continues to drive the business forward with unbridled passion and enthusiasm. There is currently a core range of an unpeated original and a heavily peated smoky edition, as well as various peated and unpeated bottlings that have spent time in a variety of cast types. A partnership between the Rolls-Royce Enthusiast Club and the English Whiskey Company saw samples from six different single casks being tasted by the directors of the club in early 2021 in order to select a specific bottling that would be exclusively available to club members only. In the case of the eventual chosen cask, New Make Spirit was filled into a 200 litre ex bourbon cask sourced from Jim Bean on the 31st of July 2014, before being disgorged on 6th of November 2018 to be transferred into another barrel that had been seasoned with Pedro Jimenez Sherry to add further rich and fruity flavours. It was then disgorged again in November 2021 for bottling, making it a 7 year old, with no colour added or chill filtration taking place, and there were only 270 bottles in existence bottled at a strength of 57% ABV. Mossburn Distillers was a brand created in 2017 by drinks producer and distributor Marussia Beverages to offer independent bottlings of whiskies from around Scotland. Marussia are also brand owners for a wide variety of spirits from whisky, grappa, brandy, rum and liqueurs. They're also the owners of the Torovec Distillery on the Isle of Skye, which only recently released their first single malt bottlings to great acclaim. Whereas their vintage cask range is a selection of selected single malts, Mossburn also produced two blended malt releases. In other words, malt whiskies created from pot stills at more than one distillery, but with no grain whisky from column stills added. They also like to experiment with different cask types, so both this island release and the Speyside version also have a somewhat convoluted front label trying to explain what's going on. So, a number of malt whiskies from a variety of ages from distilleries based around the islands of Scotland are married in 200 litre American oak barrels. I have it on good authority that there's a large portion of Orkney based Highland Park and I suspect both Torovec and Talisker from Skye are involved too, along with probably Kalila from Isla. Presumably those barrels are ex-bourbon casks, but it's not confirmed if this is actually the case, as sherry casks can also be made from American oak too. Then, there's a second maturation period in first filled bourbon casks, but the barrel heads have been replaced with those of virgin European oak that have been heavily toasted to try and impart a subtly spicy note to the spirit. That sounds complicated, but they think it's worth the effort for a whisky that's a great introduction to smoky whiskies without being too overpowering or medicinal. Mossburn Island Blended Malt is bottled at 43% ABV.